Dude, did you see that MetroCast? Their late, their end tier of internet, they've bumped it up more. It's now 50 down and 5 up. Oh, very nice. Yeah. They haven't made any other changes, but the latest one, it's like 50 down. 50 down, 5 up. Because uh, it used to be the highest you could get as a consumer was like, what, 15, 20? Yeah. And then they bumped it to 25. Like, it used to be 25. Mm-hmm. Like, I have 15 now, okay. and I'm on the mid-grade. Because uh, the big thing is like business class. You, you could get the business class service, yeah. and that was like 35 and up. Yeah. But, you, yeah, whatever. But, yeah, I totally want to get it now and potentially do live shows again. Sweet. Because... The big deal was before, it was like everybody was doing Netflix and stuff. I didn't want that, or I didn't want us eating up on that stuff. Mm-hmm. But now we got Dish, so they're not watching as much internet usage. Yeah. And then if we get the higher stuff, five, oh my God, five up? That's amazing. That is kind of That's amazing. That's five times the speed I have upload that I do now. If we can... So shows would upload <clears throat> five times as fast as the... Very nice. <laughs> if we could get Verizon... Fios. To Fios, yes. They're you know, installing it. You know that, right? It was like, how long new, is it going to take to come? New Wildwood is getting it. Is getting it, and how yeah. long is it going to take to come across the street? Yeah. Forever. Do you know how many jobs they could put in the county just in construction? <laughs> Got to dig trenches for those pipes, man. Yeah. Uh, okay. You ready to get started? Even if they could, like, farm that out to... If you want Fios, just dig a trench next to your driveway to your door. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> we'll lay the pipe. You ready? Yeah. Start. Three, two, one. It's clobbering time. This is Obsessive Comics Disorder. there everyone and this is obsessive comics disorder number 45 this is the show that is obsessing over all the things in pop culture we love comics and all the other stuff my name is chris renshaw and that's my coast over there that's philip my brain hurts over all this stuff did you just have a nerdgasm i just had a nerdgasm ah so much stuff nerd freeze it's like brain freeze nerd freeze ah so much stuff. <laughs> so, so what's ma- going on? How uh, how it's it's been a while since we. It has uh, been a while. Been... It's giving me time to think, <clears throat> to reflect. Oh, I hate it when I do that. <laughs> Cause then I get all depressed and I drink. No, nah, this is good stuff. Oh, like how to make the show better stuff. Oh, so your reflection is good I'm, stuff. I'm My ref- reflection is I. I sit home alone and drink. <laughs> Hey, Captain Morgan, you <laughs> hey, always be my friend. Okay. And then when the captain disappoints me, I go, I go up the chain. I go to Admiral Nelson. <laughs> right, that's... So it, it, interesting how you go up the chain, but cheaper in price. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so we got some segments, actually. Don't that's have right. bumpers. I haven't thought that far ahead. We haven't, no, no bumpers? No bumpers. No little bloopers are going to pop up on the screen. No, but I have background music. <laughs> background music. You heard that. Um... This is, I, I was listening to some good stuff. This is uh, Andrew Allen. He does yeah. a whole bunch of jazz covers of things. And so I got permission to use as some background music just to kind of like make things lively up. Like for instance, we'll have the, uh, the Super Mario theme. It's a little bit too low. <laughs> it's very in the background. Yes. It's so far in the background. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. Maybe. I'm working on this, all right? We're Give work, me a break. On it. We need an intern. Interns, apply. <laughs> so, this first part will be like what we normally do in a show, and that is like, what are we currently obsessing about? Except for maybe instead of a whole hour, we'll make it, you know, first little bit <laughs> of gotta, the show. We gotta curtail ourselves a little yeah. bit. So, uh... Yeah, people don't use that word at all. Curtail? Curtail. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm bringing it back, people. You hear it? Curtail. So, I think this is appropriate. No, 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 no. Oh, that's the one piece I'm, I think would be awesome. I, of course, I haven't listened to this part. Oh, yeah, I have. Um, it's to see if it was in there. But this is appropriate 
because since we didn't have a Christmas show, Turkey. we spent all that time asking what what should we do for a Christmas show, and then we didn't have one. That's what we did. It's just <laughs> stuff worked, stuff happened, you know, schedules got busy. Life. So we exchanged gifts. And I think it's funny that what we put down for current obsessions is the gifts that we exchanged. Because my cur- what I've been obsessing about recently is that guy got me... Oh, uh, he's upset. That I'm going to make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> um, Your wife's right upstairs. Stop that. Yeah. The new Super Mario Brothers 2 for the 3DS. Two. I've been wanting it for a while. I just never bought it. Because uh, I love... Because I found out... Because they're expensive. Well, that... <laughs> And I found out recently, like I've mentioned before, I like the 3DS because I like being able to just sit on the couch and play yeah. with everybody else. I don't have to come down here and do stuff. Um, so I've been playing... So previous to this, I was playing Zelda. And I found out don't like Zelda games. Really? Because I'm playing the... What is it? Okinara, Ocarina of Time. Okay. And there's too much thinking the, involved. The one that was on the... Uh, 64. Oh no. The one that was on the 64? Yeah. Okay. The one before Majora's Mask. Gotcha. So... I found out that I don't like those too much because uh, there's a lot of thinking involved. Because I, I, it was driving me nuts, and I was because it's like to defeat this boss, you must have gone over here and did this, and oh, you must have done that side quest over there and talked to that guy in the back to get that item, and then you needed that item over there, and then you put it all together and you defeat this boss. And I, that's all Zelda. I know. That's what I'm saying. I don't like that. I decided. I, I decided I don't like that. Because I found out what I like is like platformers, like Mario. Platformers straight up running there, blow yeah, them up, shoot them up. I can cut the brain off and it's just uh, run, jump, run, <laughs> jump, jump, avoid, jump. bounce, yeah, hit, fireball, jump. fireball, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So, you know what I never knew? What? Until is, is like maybe, maybe four or so years ago. Um, those fireballs that Mario throws out, he doesn't throw them out, he spits them out. I thought he always threw him out. No, no. I was I was reading somewhere. Uh, it, it was I, I was goofing around online, and I popped up, and it's uh, th- there were there was a you remember those like build your own adventure goosebump books? Yes, totally had one of those. There was I had like a crap ton of them. There was uh, there was a Mario Brothers one, and it talked about how he he got the flower, and he started spitting out the fireballs, and someone. Someone else in the room was like, spitting is very rude. You shouldn't do that. That doesn't sound like canon. I'm not taking that for canon. I'm just, I'm just, it was, it, it was Mario, but it was licensed by Nintendo. Just saying. That's like somebody making Superman fanfic about he was actually from Venus, not from Krypton. I'd buy it. <laughs> Women are from Venus. But yeah, he, he used to get off friggin' like Hulk enraged. Because someone, I don't know. Anyways. Anyways. So yeah, I've been playing the crap out of it because I had I had the first one that was for DS, the mm-hmm. new Super Mario Brothers. Love that because it's like, it's none of that 3D because it was like the Mario 64. That was a little bit more like it was okay, but it was a lot like the Zelda where like you got to go do this, this and that. There's a little bit. My favorite Mario has been like Super Mario World. That's my favorite Mar- Mario ever. Yeah. And the new Super Mario Brothers was like a trip back to that where it's the 2D jumping. And then and then there was the Super Mario 3D Land, which came out for that. It was the Mario that first came out for the 3DS. Okay. That was great because it was like the same thing, but 3D. Cool. So there was like 3D aspects, but it was still like a basic platformer. Go level one, level two, level yeah. three, you know, or excuse me, one, 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 two. Yeah. And then the two came out, and I was on that, and it's a 3DS title, too, so it's got the little 3D slider, too. <laughs> and so I've been playing that. I'm already on, like, World 5. <laughs> How many worlds are there? Eight. Eight, yeah. It's Mario, World 8. <laughs> um, except for in the 3D land, there was eight, and then there was, like, three other worlds after that. Because it was, like, the boss, there was, like, a you defeated the boss, and the boss was like, you haven't killed me yet. Yep. And then there was more. It was like the star map thing. The star, <laughs> that was in um in Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. That was the there were like there were the little worlds you had to go through and yeah. you defeat all his kids, and there were the uh, there the, were the key levels. Remember, like you find the keys in the level, and then you go find the keyhole, and that oh, opened yeah. up like a secondary map. And then there was like there was two a, star maps. I don't remember the two. Like I the, remember one. There, the, I well, we could never beat them. Oh yeah. Was, but, I did once 
on an emulator because the emulator had the little pause frame where like you could jump pause the frame and then it would keep going and then if you ever died you could just recall frame and it would go back to that part yep. so you could save anywhere in the level like i usually die here save oh i died <laughs> recall I wrong? there we go yeah <laughs> and then that would, all i did was like it changed the graphics a bunch when you finally beat it mm -hmm. so oh i'm sorry it was the star map and then there was a there was like a second cloud map too Oh, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. I, that I know what you're talking about. That's what I was thinking. Um, so that's what I, I loving the crap out of that game. So that's why I said it was appropriate to yeah. Super Mario. Super Mario. So, so Philip, so, so what, me, what, what did I get you? What I, um, uh, pain and suffering and, uh, oh, that's what you get. Wait, wait, wait. wallet. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, anger leads to pain. Anger pain leads, leads to, pain. to suffer. Or, no, excuse me. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads, leads to, to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Suffering leads to the dark side. Yeah. Whoa. So your so your wallet just jumped straight to the end. Oh, my wallet jumped straight to the end. It's, <laughs> actually, it was okay because it was Amazon gift cards. Boom. <laughs> That's what it was. Uh, yes, uh, Chris got me the X-Wing core set. One of them. One X-Wing core set, <laughs> which you then immediately need to go buy a second core set just so you can have stuff. Yeah. You, you play the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you, and you, so you have enough dice and such. Like, oh man, this is gonna be so. We're gonna get together. We need to get, uh, we need to get Pope, and we need to get uh, Scott, and we need to get uh, the other Jeremy. Game day, I'm telling you. Battle Royale, February. We should have a game day. February is when the Imperial Aces expansion is pack it? comes out. Yep. Uh, well, according to Fantasy Flight's website, which they don't really update. Well, a lot it was often. supposed to come out before Christmas, so yeah. yeah. It, I am so excited for those new ships. It's posting February 2014. I'm going to have to make an all interceptor. Like, it makes me want to play Empire. I normally do. You normally do Rebels. I normally yeah. do Rebels. I, if we get all of us together, you can play all your interceptors. I'm going to steal Jer one of Jeremy's. Or I'm going to steal Jeremy's Falcon and your Falcon and Scott's Falcon. <laughs> I'm going to run my three Falcon squadrons. Okay. Scott doesn't have set. He just borrows our That's stuff. That's right. Both Jeremy's. Yeah. I'm going to steal both Jeremy's and yours Falcons and run around my three Falcons. <laughs> Yeah, but after seeing how well the A-Wings do, I want to do like a whole bunch of like interceptors using those cool new, the Imperial Aces stuff, where oh. I could do the barrel turn, or I could do a barrel roll and an angle. A banking barrel roll, that is Can amazing. you imagine that with push the limit? Because you can, you could do two barrel rolls, couldn't you? No. No, that's right, you can't do two in a row. But you could do a boost and a barrel turn, yep. or barrel roll. I'm just digging, I'm, I'm actually liking the, uh, the selective K-turns. Because I think, Oh yeah, where you could choose like you could put in the five and then choose to go boop, one instead. Yeah, well, uh, you you could whatever whatever K turn an interceptor has, I think it has a four. Mm -hmm. um, then once you select your once you flip over, oh hey look I'm doing a K turn, but uh, I'm not gonna do that four. I'm gonna do a one three or five instead. How about that? Well yeah, that's the deal is you can all, but see the other benefit of that is you can see where everybody else goes instead. So see cuz it was a high pilot level. He, yeah, he was so you eight, can you can see where everybody else goes and then maybe you plan okay. for a 4. Maybe that's too everyone went like this. Okay, well I'm going to do a 3 instead and pop right here and pop in right behind him. And he's the only character in the game that will ever be able to do a 1k a 1k turn. turn. Yeah. It's like <laughs> Oh, he, you ran into me? Yeah, let me just how about that? Yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be some cool stuff. So I'm going up to New Jersey for a couple weeks, which also is why we won't have a show for a couple weeks. On purpose? On purpose. Again? Work. Ah. So. But Jeremy's going up different projects, same area. Okay. So and we also happen to be staying at the same hotel. <laughs> so it was like, Jeremy. And he's like, Chris. Hey, Chris. <laughs> so you're gonna bring your X Wing stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, uh -oh. I forgot uh -oh. another obsession real quick. Because there's something I wanted to talk about. So, I I played my Xbox. Like, okay. I know this is a shocker, but I played my Xbox. Okay, yeah. Or, or a Xbox. Because one of the other things my brother got me for Christmas was Call of Duty Ghosts. And I was fully prepared to sit here on this show and talk about how this was the worst Call of Duty ever made. And it was terrible like i am a fan of call of duty yeah i'll still play it because it's a game me and my brother get to just play each other that's the point of the game shoot each other in the face yeah. well <laughs> no we're usually on the same team but 
Uh, you can still try to shoot him in the face. Try. But between the whole, like, the maps suck, there's these awful mechanics involving, like, a dog. Like, if you get five kills, one of the kill streaks you can equip is a dog. And the dog doesn't die when you die. And if the dog comes up to you, like, if you're an enemy and the dog sees you, it instantly comes over and kills you. Like, immediate. Like, if you don't kill the dog, one hit KO. It's the stupidest game or stupidest mechanic ever, and it makes me want to go strangle a developer. Yeah, that's that's got to be like what you got to be like a general to get that ability. Maybe no, you start the game with it. That that's um yeah yeah. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. I know, <laughs> but so I was solely prepared to sit here and tell you that. Yeah. And so Jeremy came over and we played some today. Um, and we decided, because he we played a game, and he's like, this is terrible. The multiplayer is just terrible. Yeah. Like, the maps suck. And so I was like, okay, let's see if there's a, another co-op kind of game. And there's an extinction mode. Okay. And it's basically what they had in some of the other Call of Duty's is zombies or, yeah. like, horde mode in some of, the, some of the other games where it's just up to four people and just waves of stuff, except for they're coming. aliens. Yeah. But it's great because... In the past, one of the was it Black Ops? They had zombies where you started off in one room and you bought weapons. You start with a pistol, yeah, and you was, have to get money. And, we played this, yeah, I we think. Played that, and you have to you get, get money to, to open doors uh -huh. or get new weapons. Yeah, yeah. Well, this mode, you start off. It's in the open for one thing. Okay. Um, you start off. You kill. St you kill like. Uh, you have to plant this little drill, and when you drill it, that's when the, everything starts coming out. Okay. So you can get a second to orient yourself, and then plant the drill. The cord of people come out. You so shoot what you're all. saying is, you were totally about to bone your girlfriend, but then there was this drill, <laughs> and she was like, "There is no, no way." way. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because Jeremy's character was a girl. <laughs> so, and then like, you get weapons, and there's challenges too. Like it'll say, "Don't take damage while the drill is es excavating," and you get bonus points which you can use to upgrade your skills while you're playing. Gotcha. But it's really great because you can level up in it, and by leveling up in it, you can change your loadout when you go into the when you start the thing. Like you can start as you can change your class from like a weapons expert who does more damage to a uh, a tank who gets more health, mm -hmm. or an engineer that gets more bonuses and defends the drill better. Gotcha. Or there's like a medic. Oh yeah. So it's real. It's a lot of fun. And we, Jeremy and I played it for like two hours today. It was so, I'm like, so I could see her say that the Call of Duty Ghost is great, just not the multiplayer part. Just not it's the multiplayer terrible. part. So. See, that's my, that's my problem. I've, like, I love multiplayer, um, even though I die a lot. I, I love running around and like shooting people and all that kind of stuff. But whenever I play those games, I'm like, I kind of, I kind of put myself into the military mindset. All right, tactical. Let's hide around the building. Let's try to be. These all people run around with sniper <laughs> rifles like assault guns. Yes, they run around with sniper. They, one, they run around. Two, they're all jumping and weaving and bobbing and do. And so that that's. Let okay. Let's let let's go to Fallujah right now because it just got retaken. Yeah, but about people don't respawn when you kill them. That's right, they don't. Because like you can't sit in one place and snipe because if you do that, then when the person respawns, they know where you are. That's right. Or know where you are. So. Sorry to hijack you there for a second. Let's, Let's just turn that ability off. Tell me about these Kindle books. So Kindle books. Kindle books. Yeah, did um did 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 you update the show notes because I can't see them? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. I keep reloading and it won't let me see it. Weird. Oh, it still says it's uploading. Uh. My bad. Yeah. So I guess we need that FiOS down here, don't we? Come on, Verizon. Nope, there it goes now. Should be good now. Jack wagons. All right, there we go. Yes, Kindle books. I have been reading Kindle books like nobody's business because I don't have TV in my room. So when I get tired of playing Star Trek, I'll read a Star Trek novel. Yay! <laughs> that makes me want to get... I need to get the uh, the guy, Andrew Allen, he does a Smooth Federation, which is a bunch of Star Trek things. I need to get that on here and drop yes. some in for you. Love Star Trek. But the thing I had to start doing was uh I guess change it up. I Angry read Birds. Uh, I read one, they came out with something, it started uh I think August of last year. It was called The Fall. Okay. Uh, DS9's been destroyed and they rebuilt it and all this kind of stuff. Where's the set at? Um, this is set 
in it's set in 2382 Don't, i think uh, tell me shows uh all shows okay like uh, ds9 voyager and yeah telling me a date well because not... like everything's everything's ended right all right but well dates because i had to i'm looking at the wikipedia for all the star trek novels ever mm -hmm. and uh so i read this one all right i read the uh the first one of the fall and like they rebuilt ds9 it's a pretty awesome station it's got all the shielding and stuff uh, but then I'm getting references to stuff that I have no idea what's going on. So then I jump backward in time to uh, Titan. Uh, that's uh, that's Riker's ship, right? And this is the book I was the book uh, the first part of the Titan series was the very end of Nemesis when he walks into the ready room and he's like, "I'm on the Titan and we're going to back to the neutral zone." Right. Well, this is that book. But then they're still referencing stuff. I have no idea what's going on. So finally, I backtracked all the way to when Voyager reappears in the Alpha Quadrant. Okay. This book starts 30 seconds after that Borg probe gets destroyed. After it swallowed Voyager and they're in the... Boom. Yeah. So that's where I started reading up from. And now it's like, oh, okay. This is happening. This is happening. This is happening. Oh, is it wait. like the same author, or are these just officially... Just officially licensed and all that stuff. Oh, okay. But because it's Next Generation, DS9, and Voyager, I started reading the Voyager line continuously, but, oh, they were referencing stuff that happened in a TNG book oh. or that happened in a DS9 book. So it's like you got to try to intertwine them. Nice. And read it, yeah. What were you telling me? Like, how many books had you read before Christmas or before... Oh, yeah, like before December, I think I only had, like between 60 and 70 Kindle books and now I'm up to almost 100. Nice. Yeah, bought 30 in a month. <laughs> Just me. I have nothing else to do. Hey, that's like a book a day. That is like a book a day. It And seriously, that's how there, there are some series when I get into them it's like, alright, this is book one of nine. Okay. Six hours later, I'm done. Let's I'm totally like, if I'm sitting down not doing <laughs> anything, if I'm not doing anything, I will totally do that same thing. I mean, there could be worse things. Ask me when the last time I read a book was. Uh, 1994. No. Oh, no, you had to go to college. So, <laughs> 2003. <laughs> no. Oh, you were still in high school. Uh, August. 2009. It was, was August like, when I finished August. Game of Thrones. Okay, gotcha. I thought you were say August, and it was a tech manual for work. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Let's ju jump down. Let's jump on to something new. And it's a section called, I want this. I want this. And this is where we just find, because we all sometimes find all sorts of things that we geek about. And it's just something that we found on the internet that just, I want this. And the one I have example for you today, you have to pull it up in the show notes to see, but it's a, called a home defense table. And basically, it's just this table and a leg, but the way that the thing's anchored is that the top of the table comes off and it's got handles for a shield and then you can take the leg that it stays on and pull it out and it's a bat. It's a short bat. Yeah. yeah, and so you leave this as your side table in your bed and then you hear a noise in your house and you just go shoop, shoop. And then now you got a shield and a bat all the way. I want this. This is awesome. That is kind of awesome. The only problem is in my house there would be tons of stuff on top of it. Yeah, there, there'd I'd be have like, to like knock that stuff off and then pull it yeah, out. Yeah. There'd be an alarm clock, maybe a glass of water or something my like phone, that. My phone, phone, <laughs> no, my glasses. Now I can't see. <laughs> so that's the only downfall with this, but yeah, music ended. <laughs> All of a sudden, it got really quiet. <laughs> that's when the horde's gonna come out of the wall and just <laughs> envelop us. Here we go. So yes, home defense table, portal music now. Portal music now. There we go. So yeah, I want this. I, I want Portal this. gun. That's what I Portal want. Portal gun. There you go. <laughs> All right. So I don't know what to call this, but this is going to be our topics kind of section. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I probably should have talked with you a little bit for what we talk about, yeah. but uh. This is all the different news clips I find on the internet. I'm calling it right now this week in geek, but that could change. First thing I want to uh, <laughs> since since we haven't posted in a while, this is probably like uh last year in geek. Yeah. Well, that's why I tried to trim some of these out. <laughs> that's why you're going to see me kind of jump ahead. So just go cue off me. But this first one I wanted to talk about, and that is the NASA's Valkyrie robot, a six-foot superhero designed to save you from disasters. So this is like Iron Man with take out Robert Downey Jr. and just leave in Jarvis. Yes. <laughs> NASA's created a robot for DARPA's upcoming robotics challenge trials. The Valkyrie is a six-foot, two-inch humanoid machine with detachable arms, sonar sensors, 
mounted cameras and a glowing Stony, Tony Stark-esque circle in the middle of its chest. The space agency says it's mobile and dexterous enough to enter disaster zones to provide search and rescue functions. And this is on uh, The Verge is where I found this sword. But it looks like Iron Man, except for with like a, a Master Chief helmet. <laughs> and I love how like the reasoning they give for like the whole, it's like we wanted it to look cool. <laughs> Don't you want to be functional first and then look cool? I well, mean, I know. That's I... what they said. They went for functional. But then, you know, if I, hold on. There's a quote in here that says... Uh, it was, uh, in addition to ProBot's practical uses, they explain how his team was looking for, lo focused on creating an awesome looking machine. <laughs> so, when as soon as I read that quote, you know what the first thing I thought about? If you're going to build a time machine into the car, why not do it with some style? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's got a point. If you're going to make something, why not just make it yeah, awesome, make not it make awesome, it bland? Yeah. That's my one problem with sci-fi. I'm gonna jump track here. Yeah. Sci-fi shows. Sci-fi. Except for Star Trek. Anything but Star Trek. If you look at human spaceships versus alien spaceships, alien spaceships are always like sleek and very design oriented and yep. just they're like pieces of art. And then you look at the human ship and it's this blocky like piece of crap, like junker kind of put together. Stargate. Yes. Okay. I mean, that you can kind of explain because we're new, but we're I'm new. talking about like other shows where it's not, you know, there's not that piece, you know. Of course, you know, look at a Model T versus a Corvette. Yeah. You know, we're, we're early in the process here. But anyways. You also jump brands. <laughs> Model T versus a Mustang. Mustang. There we there go. We All go. Right. There we All right. right. Really? Stick with the family. Come on now. Jesus. So Star Grandpa Trek was the only it. one that was not like that. Yes. It was it was the ship human ships were actually sleek and stylish Very too. Nice. So. Spe oh, spe especially the relativity. Yeah. The the time ship. That was a that oh that was a beautiful ship. Yeah. So, anyways, I like this. This is great. This makes me all excited. Especially when you see like the big things that they have with this is it's hard from the power. But it looks like I think the thing was with this one, it doesn't require like the big umbilical cord. Yeah, that see, that's the big thing is all these robots are coming out, and you see them; they all have to have umbilicals. Even when they, um, every once in a while, you'll see on History Channel they'll do the Modern Marvels where they're talking like exoskeletons and stuff. Yeah, and the guy's connected to this giant umbilical, and it's like that's not practical if you're trying to run around and you know smash through walls and stuff. Yeah, you this giant. You you're, you basically turn into uh, from the anime Evangelion. <laughs> Never saw it. Never saw it. good anime. It's a, that's a that's something else here. What else we got here? I saw this Ant Man. Oh yeah, yeah. You didn't hear about this? No, I didn't hear about this. You hear about this? You hear about this? No. So th this one is a couple days old or a couple weeks old. Okay. But that is is that uh, so Edgar Wright, the guy that did. Uh, Shaun of the Dead, Scott Pilgrim. Gotcha. He's directing Marvel Studios. Ant-Man should be in like 2016, I think is when it is. After like movie Nirvana for, for nerds. 2015 is going to be the year of all nerds. Okay. Because you've got the Batman Superman movie. Gotcha. Avengers 2. Ooh. The next Star Wars movie. Yeah. And then do I really need to say anything else? The World of Warcraft movie was supposed to come out, but it ended up being on the same day as the new Star Wars movie, and they pumped it to 2016. They can just do it like the next week? Well, it was like Star Wars is in like the Christmas time frame. Oh, okay. So they just didn't want, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Pop it next month. It'll yeah. Fun. So, anyways. No one's trying to spend that much money. In, uh, we, so, playing the part of uh, Ant-Man, which I guess we don't technically know if it's going to be uh, Hank Pym or whatever, is uh, Paul Rudd. Hmm. Paul Rudd is going to be Ant-Man in early talks to play in Edgar Wright's long gesturing or gestating adaptation of the Marvel superhero. I'm, I'm kind of at a loss because I don't remember anything. about. I've, I've, this is the first I've ever heard about Ant-Man. Okay. So Ant-Man was one of the original Avengers. Okay. He was also, um, I mean, he's been around for the guy. I mean, the guy's like as smart as Tony Stark or Tony Stark or Reed Richards. Yeah. Um, but uh, 
what I've been hearing and a lot of the conversation I've been hearing on the internet is this is good because if you take Ant-Man and try and do a serious movie, it just doesn't work right. But the way they're having Edgar Wright and now with this Paul Rudd casting as everyone's talking about how it lends the idea there's going to be a little bit of, it's going to be a little bit of a, an action comedy kind of thing. Okay. And so I'm down with that. Like Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. Yeah. Action comedy. Yeah. And that was one of the examples I got offered. Okay, cool. Yeah. So okay, who is Ant-Man? Ant-Man is this guy called Hank Pym who developed a suit that he could shrink down and still rain. I think it's, and still maintain his relative strength. So even though his size is smaller, he still got like the strength of a man. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and I think communicate with ants, something like that. But like, there's a clip that he used this kind of like a pitch to Marvel where it's like this guy runs down a hallway, like, sh- and like another guy pulls out a barrel and the ant man shrinks down and then runs across the barrel and then just like gets bigger and punches, punches the guy in the, the face. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. This one caught my eye. What's that? Uh, DARPA tried to build Skynet. Oh yeah. In the 1980s. <laughs> So when, when when did Terminator come out in the seventies? No, it was like eighty five was the first. Oh, one. Yeah, see, from nineteen eighty three to nineteen ninety three, DARPA spent. Uh, speaking of DARPA, just talking about building robots, mm-hmm. spent over one billion dollars on a program called the Strategic Computing Initiative. That sounds like something from a Terminator movie. Yeah, the agency's goal was to push the boundaries of computers, artificial intelligence, and robotics to build something that, in hindsight, looks strikingly similar to the dystopian future of the Terminator movies. They wanted to build Skynet. So, but like the Ronald Reagan Star Wars program, it was too ambitious for what they were trying to do. Always makes you feel kind of happy with our uh, government. That's like, hey, looks like movies are going to have predicted our future accurately. Yeah. So, somebody protect Linda Hamilton. Da, 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 da. And the guy from Terminator 2, because I can't remember his name. Or Christian Bale. Yes. Protect Christian Bale. And uh and Chekhov. And Chekhov. Protect Chekhov. Uh protect Christian Bale. Uh do not let Kevin Bacon die. Uh wait, which movie was he in? What's that? No, that's uh that's uh twenty years ago. We had uh Steve Jobs, Johnny Cash, and Bob Hope. Oh. Now we have no jobs, no cash, and no hope. Oh, wow. Don't let Kevin Bacon die. <laughs> oh. I had like a hiccup. <laughs> You're like, hmm, Bacon. No, I had a hiccup and a burp at the <laughs> same time. Bacon, I was bacon, like, bacon, uh, bacon, burp. Bacon. Oh, yes. Um, okay, I'm going to go take out a loan for uh, $35,000. <laughs> you saw that last one? I saw that one. All right, we'll get to that. <laughs> no, 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 you think that's good. Wait till you go scroll down even further. But, so... Uh, sorry, skipping down. Marvel. Uh, Marvel can do a good job. All right, let's. All right, let's jump to. By the, uh, you want? You know, I have a Ooh. good assortment assortment of action figures here. Just, just a little bit, yeah. So, uh, someone is gonna make Firefly action figures. Ooh. Uh, Funko, who's previously told this is from io9, will be making six inch. Game of Thrones figures, Buffy the Vampire figures, all in 2014. Uh, it's also going to be making Firefly action figures. So I could adorn my... Oh, hold on. I can fix this. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Studio shot. Studio <laughs> shot. There's a nice little... Uh... There's a nice little shot of... As you can see, the camera slowly <laughs> waiting down and it's coming. It's, it's panning for you. That's what it's doing. <laughs> all right. You can see... Totally set that up on purpose. The nice selection of action figures there. That's only a little bit of them. But... Uh, I could add some uh, add some Firefly Firefly to this, figures yeah. to it. You don't pay me to talk pretty. So I guess I totally could have, I totally could have included this in uh, the I want this category. Yeah. But jumping next to the fully wearable Iron Man Mark III suit can be made for you for thirty five thousand dollars. Thirty five thousand dollars. Except for the fact that nobody asked Marvel about it. Really? Yeah. So if you read down in this article, this is an Engadget article. And all these articles, we're just giving short clips. These are all going to be in the show notes. Oh, my God. Show notes. Who knew? Uh, They went through all this process, advertised it and everything, but then didn't ask Marvel about it. And so they had to pull the website down. 
What? Yeah. Or they had to put a halt to it while they're uh, talking to my marble. So. <coughs> yeah. Got $35,000. So for the price... So the hat for half the price of a brand new DeLorean, refurbished DeLorean, you could have an Iron Man Mark III suit. It's fully wearable. I don't think I could get away with that. I just Wait, where did, where anyone that anyone that buys these is clearly single. Where does it say that Marvel said they couldn't do it? Uh, well, it may not be in that article. Oh yeah, it's not in that article. Well, but I read somewhere that the problem that. Because I may have been because of this article or articles like this that Marvel found out about it uh, because it got so pub it got so much publicity and then they uh, they canned it. Yeah, I know. It says they already had five thousand pre orders of two thousand dollar suits. Yeah. But like I said, all those people single. So, because, like, could you see me justifies, I'm, I'm going to have, hey, I'm going to go spend $35,000. Oh, on what? A new car? No, Iron Man suit. Okay, yeah. I'll get a, I'll get a phone call, like, 10 minutes later. Hey, uh, I sleep on your couch. I'm getting divorced. <laughs> You're just kicking me out. No. In my circumstance, I just get the crap beaten out of me. Okay. So, but you know how I'd be Wait, able... she has insurance on you, right? <laughs> You know how I'd be able to afford that $35,000 car? Or uh, $35,000 uh, suit? With all the money I'm going to save driving my solar-powered concept car. All right. And that is Ford C-Max Solar Energy Concept. It's a solar-powered roof car. So this is a this is going to be demoed at CES next week. This is a plug-in hybrid. So it's just like, like the Leaf, the Nissan Leaf. Yeah. Um, this is a version of that that... Um, which I believe they already have exists. This is a C-Max Energy Hybrid. But this is a new one that is solar as well. So you can plug it into your house and charge it like you normally would. Yeah. But it also has a solar paneled roof. So you don't have to plug it into your house because it will charge itself if you leave it in the sun long enough. If you leave, yeah. See, now the big question is how efficient is that solar panel? Here's the part of that. If you keep reading, it's not actually a straight solar powered roof. Okay. So the what it, it is a solar panel roof, but then you park it under this don't or this structure that they put up, and the structure focuses the sunlight. So the the sun hits the roof of the structure and gets focused onto the car, and it helps um, make the solar panel more efficient. Okay. Uh, that that's actually built into the solar panel itself. Oh, is it? Yeah. The the panel itself houses a special solar concentrator lens. Oh, and then I heard somebody explaining it yeah. wrong. I saw that there were supposedly, like, the thing I said... Like, this, you're going to have to build a special edition on yeah, your garage or, or not, something. Or to, just, like, have a little... Like, you have a carport. You just yeah. have this thing. And then it was saying something like the car will do micro-adjustments to kind of, like, reposition it for the great, correct sun position. Yeah, I don't want my car moving itself when I'm <laughs> in it. That's <laughs> what... So that's what Ashley said when okay, I mentioned something no, to her about I, it. I, I would, I'd have to do... Uh, remember in... What's it? Uh, hey, by the way. <laughs> uh, in, uh, in... Let's see. Batman 2? What was that? Batman Returns? Yes. Okay. Uh, where the Batmobile like lifts itself up real quick to put all the armor and stuff on it. Okay. Yeah. I, I would just have that under the car. The, the car would be up, and the wheels could spin all they want. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I just want that. I just want the Batman pedestal thing where I can drive into the car and it go. <laughs> it just spins all day long. Well, no, like it can rotate, and then I can just drive out of my car, uh, garage. Yeah. You know. Get the garages from uh, iRobot. <laughs> that was kind of sweet. I can't the, remember. The arm just comes and like latches onto your car. And then picks it up and moves it into like this, basically like a, an old projector where you hit the button and the new slide goes down. Yeah, and that's like how the garage was. It just like popped the wow. cars into. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I still want one of those Iron Man suits. <laughs> it says it's powered by a AAA battery. What the Iron Man suit? Yeah. Nice. 
a triple sensor controlled motors powered by a AAA battery to the, activate the thrusters on the back and even slide open the helmet so loved ones can smack that smug Tony Stark like permagrain off your face. I don't want to get smacked in the face. <laughs> you know who did? Hey, you know, it's it's perfect that you said that. Yes. Because I'm going to jump down here to this Missouri bar co- story. And you know what they did? They smacked Starbucks in the face. I, I, I saw this when my homepage opened up, and I didn't read it. And I wanted so, to. So there's a Missouri bar that had a drink called a Frappuccino. Except for Starbucks, you know, they have it as, uh, let's see, how did they spell it? They had a Frappuccino that had like an I, whereas Starbucks had like a U. And yes. so Starbucks sent them a cease and desist letter saying you can't serve this drink anymore. So what they did is they wrote a letter back and attached six bucks. Here's the letter. Dear Mr. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, excuse me. That's the cease and desist letter. Yeah. Hold on. Let me scroll down. Uh, um, <laughs> here's the letter. I re- the person says, I represent the pub and blah, blah, blah. I'm writing a response to your letter in regards to the Frappuccino at risk of further lawsuits, hereby known as the F word. <laughs> as you probably don't know, it's a proud owner of no trademarks, including our own name, much less the word F word. And in nothing about us is incontestable. It's saying is like, we're, we're nobody. We're not going to contest anything. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they go to mention that the reason that the drink was spelled wrong is because they thought they were spelling it right and they purposely spelled it or they they accidentally spelled the drink wrong. That's why there's a I instead of a U's because they just, it says, lucky for us, we're poor spellers. Yeah. <laughs> because it says, unfortunately, it was only similar to F word because we meant to call it the same thing. <laughs> we meant no deception. We never thought that our beer drinking customers would actually thought that the alcoholic beverage coming out of the tap would actually have been coffee from one of the many, many stores located just a few blocks away. I guess that with there being a Starbucks on every corner of every block in every city, many people may think they could get a Starbucks at a local bar. So that was our mistake. (laughs) Oh, gosh. And it's like we also promised to start our production of our Starbucks, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Marlboro, Honey Lager (laughs) for fear of future (laughs) repercussions. Please find an enclosed check for the full amount of profit gain from the sale of those three beers. Here is $6. (laughs) Hey. Uh, that's awesome. A, a, st- a small business owners need to stick together. <laughs> so I thought that was great. I, I I thought it worthy of sticking in here. Yeah. That, uh. Bravo. Way to stick up to the man. Because this is America. We can do that. Yeah. Although like- I'm starting to get to the point where I see stories like that. I think it's a hoax. Yeah. And you know that? You uh, always see those stories where you're just like, bravo, and then it's like, oh, that was staged. That was staged. Do you remember uh, the one they turned out, they found out was a giant hoax? The uh, the lesbian waitress? Yes. That's oh, what I'm talking about. Man. Stories like that, and then you hear about, oh, that was a hoax. That like, was a hor- I don't like, was I don't know what to believe anymore. Or not even a hoax. It was just she completely lied on right. everybody. And I was like, wow, good job, kid. Yeah. Good job for people keeping their receipt. And, and then uh, she got fired. Yes. <laughs> now you have no jobs, no cash, and no hope. <laughs> well, that was like the, did you see the, the the story going around about the Taco Bell guy that took like Instagram photos of him like defiling tacos? Licking taco shells, yeah. Yeah. And then posted it and then got wondered why he got fired. Exactly. Exactly. Like, it's, it's like if you're going to do it, do it. But did we need? Did you really need to post it on Instagram? Yes. Had to post it on Instagram. <laughs> I'm gonna be like so famous. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. No one's gonna come eat tacos here ever again. And then I'll get fired because we're not making any money. Hmm. Wait a minute. That's some higher brain functions kicking That's in. That's higher brain functions. No, he he shut those down. <laughs> Skynet wasn't activated yet. Yeah. We'll do we'll do one more story. Do one more story because I don't want to like overwhelm you guys with like a whole bunch of stuff. Story time. We're gonna jump down to the bottom of the list, and that is you think that thirty five thousand dollars was great. How about a thirty thousand dollars Star Trek Enterprise movie theater in your basement? Yeah, but it's the original series. But still, eh, it's the original series. You got thirty thousand dollars to spend upgrading your home. Do you buy yourself a boring redecoration, or do you try something more unusual? Uh, 
You go unusual, but you go with an awesome enterprise. Yeah, but if you grew up in the, you know, loving the 60s show, but you got to figure as much money as they spent on this, you know, it could, with that same amount of money, think about what you could do for a TNG one. And did I ever show you the guy that decked out his apartment flat to look like a Voyager? Mm-hmm. And like the, the door, the entryway was like a transporter. Yep. So, so he's like, do that. Turn your house into like the hallway. This makes me wish I was a millionaire. It did, yeah. So I could like do stuff like this. Oh, but then my house would be completely decked out. All right, there would be. Let's. My see. house would just be like an enterprise on the ground. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'd have. Well, let's see. I take. I'd have a nuclear power plant running it all, and that would be the warp core. Yeah, like like engineering. What would be engine like the washroom? Would that be engineering? Mm. Or no, like like the laundry room, that kind of stuff. I don't know. See, I if I was gonna have a house like that. I would have engineering be like the electrical, like the 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 electrical, the water heater, that the, kind of stuff. The water heater, the you know the because um, I would have like solar panels, like the fuse box. Okay, yeah. It would also be like you know I'd have like a generator, yeah, like as the backup system. You know, <laughs> we got to put more fusion reactors into the grid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and then let's see. So then like. The kitchen would be like ten forward. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, what? Uh, med bay. <laughs> bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> you notice there's never bathrooms in there. No, there's never bathrooms. They never okay. show. I've seen this. They had like the sonic showers. I uh-huh. saw that. I saw. I. In but you one. never see any of them taking a dump. There's yeah. never like. You never see Captain Picard stepping out of the radar. Sorry guys, I had diarrhea. <laughs> I don't know what the hell Guinan put in that yesterday, but it was getting to me. <laughs> Bridge to maintenance. <laughs> no, hold on. Hold on. Picture this. Captain Picard on the toilet. Picard to maintenance. I need toilet paper. Make it so. <laughs> well, that like, you never... How many times... There could be... Uh, let's say the ship blows up. Okay? I'm, I'm just going up... The ship blows up because Captain had Thai food, and uh, he's stuck, and he can't. I make shouldn't a have replicated that Thai food. <laughs> shouldn't have replicated that Thai food. And washed it down with the Earl Grey tea, <laughs> hot, with lemon. Because you put the... lemon in Earl Grey. Oh, all right. Just... He never said that. He never. Maybe says the replicator that. just knew. Probably. <laughs> I learned that from the Da Vinci Code. Oh, okay. With Ian McClellan, with Gandalf. You know, I just about like touched my MacBook screen. Yeah, like I I <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that. All right. So to finish off the day, we have one more segment. One more segment. Well, ideally, we'd have another segment of feedback, wah, wah. but you guys need to send us some so we could talk about wah. it. And I'm thinking we need to start up our Reddit. I have a Reddit that's like reddit.com slash r slash OCDcast. Okay. People can submit stories to that, and we can talk about them on the show oh, about yeah. things, they lo- things they're obsessing about. That's right. So, um, so I'm to, sp- our, to our four viewers, yeah, <laughs> go to the webpage. I'm gonna play this specifically for it as All the background, right. and that is I'm right now calling this the uh, the fail of the week, of the and that is and I saw this I could I really I could not believe this, and uh, so teenager or excuse me tourist sorry wrong T word mm. falls off pier while checking Facebook. Tai, of course, it's Taiwan. I I don't know what I meant by that. I, I don't know. It just seems like it'd be weird. It's it's it just sounds weird that it's not America. Talking uh, or was walking along a pier near Melbourne on Monday night when she became distracted by her Facebook feed and plummeted into the chilly water of the Port Phillip Bay. Victoria Police said. Okay. Okay. Now let, let's hang on. Okay. This was Australia. Okay. And it was a Taiwanese woman. Okay. Okay. You said it was Taiwan. Well, I said Taiwanese. Or, I mean, yeah, I did say Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, okay, like, so. Like, wait a minute. Australia place, Taiwanese woman, Facebook on phone. Okay. This is why we should never leave the house. I've been distracted while on there. You know, I've walked into, like, a... I've walked into a pole before. I'm not going to admit <laughs> yeah. it. I, I mean, I'm not, like, not straight up, like, walked into it, but, like, I've been paying attention and, like, grazed a pole, you know, like, stumble. <laughs> smacked into stuff. Yeah. You know, I've smacked into stuff. But I've never been so distracted. And by the way, what kind of pier is she standing at where they didn't have guardrails? Yeah. 
What was this like? Or or did it have guardrails? She was that focused where she was just so pay. You yeah, know, going, going. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah. You've never done the long walk off the short pier. <laughs> the woman was taken to hospital for treatment. Oh, go figure. Called on Constable Kelly. Called on people to take greater care while using social media around water. You think? We How obsessed are you about your your Farmville? To where you have to you walk off a pier? Yeah, and your phone's not done for. Why were you walking towards the edge of a pier, anyways? And didn't well, it? I mean, hey, there's plenty. There's plenty. With the guardrails, you know, you lean on them, look out at the water, watch the dolphins. Yeah, but do you really like, oh, I'm going to go check out the water. No, let me keep looking, keep looking, keep. Oh, maybe I should stop to see if I'm there or not. Maybe I should put away the phone. Like, I, I use my phone a lot. This just boggles my mind. It, it is. It's People don't think. No one thinks anymore. Yeah. Sigh. She was hoping for like the force field to come up and zzz, she was going to bounce off of it. See, this is appropriate. All right. Uh, well, that's all I got for you guys this week. There's a lot of other stuff here, but... A lot of eh. stuff in the show notes. Browse through it. Send us your feedback. Yeah. So, these are the kind of stories that we would like to be talking about. Send us if you've got stuff you want to talk about. We'll talk about them on the show. Feedback at OCDcast.com is the place you can go. That's Philip's head. That's my head. And that's where you can find us all stuff. You can also follow us on Twitter. I'm at Chris the Prof. Philip is at Philip underscore OCD. You can find all these details at OCDcast.com, including our Facebook page, facebook.com slash obsessive comics disorder. Thank you guys so much for watching this or watching this episode. If you're on YouTube, downloading it, if you're on, if you're downloading it through the podcast. Um, so give us some feedback. Let us know how we can improve the show. it will be a couple weeks before we have a new show. Cause like I said, business trip, Chris has to work. Yeah. Give me a chance to do that bumper stuff I've been talking about and work on the show a little bit more, but good stuff's coming. I'm really wanting to dedicate 2014 to making all my podcasts better. So thank you guys for being a part of that as always. And in the meantime, I'm Chris. I feel it. And you've been watching obsessive comics disorder. We will see you guys next time. Hey, isn't that appropriate? The music's going out. Yeah. We're out! We're done!